The House of Representatives has affirmed its integrity and honor amid an ongoing dispute with the Senate over charter change, adopting a resolution that dismisses what it calls baseless accusations against Speaker Martin Romualdez. The resolution condemns the Senate's confrontational tactics and highlights their negative impact on cooperative governance and public trust in parliamentary processes. The conflict between the two chambers stems from differing views on charter change, leading to verbal clashes between lawmakers. Senator Emi Marcos directly implicated Speaker Romualdez in an alleged campaign to collect signatures for Chacha through People's Initiative PI, citing monetary incentives. However, Romualdez has consistently denied involvement in the PI efforts. During the resolution's adoption on Monday, House Senior Deputy Speaker Aurelio Gonzalez Jr. asserted that the House had no role in the signature drive, attributing it to a private organization. The resolution, signed by House leaders and political party leaders, expresses concern over the Senate's allegations, which they argue undermine the lower chamber's independence, reputation, and integrity. The resolution serves as a formal denouncement of the Senate's confrontational tactics, branding them a breach of interparliamentary courtesy and a challenge to the integrity of the parliamentary institution. The House deemed the Senate's recent inquiry into the alleged signature-buying drive for PI a waste of time and government resources. House leaders declared their unity in rejecting the unfounded accusations, committing to defend the institution's dignity and integrity while offering unwavering support to Speaker Romualdez. The resolution garnered 283 signatories from House members. In response to the Senate's inquiry, the Commission on Elections COMLEC, halted all PI proceedings, including the acceptance of signature sheets in local offices. COMLEC Chief George Garcia confirmed on Monday that all accepted signature pages would remain in local offices. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, esteemed members, and distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, magandang hapon po. Today, I stand before you with a heart full of serve of resolve and a voice echoing the collective sentiment of this August chamber in the midst of, Sen of Senate's accusations and confrontational stance. We affirm our unwavering solidarity and support to the leadership of the Honorable Speaker Ferdinand Martin Gomez Romualdez and uphold the integrity and honor of the House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, in the course of the performance of our legislative duties, it is a matter of course that we encounter diverse opinions and perspectives. These are vital to our parliamentary process and healthy sign of a vibrant democracy. However, recent events have cast a dark shadow over the decorum and mutual respect that should define the relationship between our co-equal legislative bodies. The unfounded allegations hardened by some members of the Senate on the issues surrounding the People's Initiative are direct violation of interparliamentary courtesy and undermine the independence and integrity of the House of Representatives. My honorable colleagues, we must, as one body, rise in defense of the leadership and dignity of our institution against these ridiculous allegations. Unsubstantiated and they are, which foster a climate of mistrust that is detrimental to our nation's progress, and it is imperative that we denounce these underhanded tactics that erode public trust in our parliamentary processes. By approving resolution of both houses number six, we sought to amend our constitution and make our beloved Philippines a more investor-friendly and globally competitive country. This initiative, in support of President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr.'s agenda, was conducted with the utmost legal and procedural integrity. 
we have no involvement in the signature drive to amend the Constitution. And it was, in fact, initiated by a private organization. We, however, respect the people's initiative as it clearly manifests the essence of our country's democratic process. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, in the face of this unfounded indictment, the Speaker has bravely defended the integrity and honor of the House of Representatives. Yet, he continues to call upon our honorable members to be discerning while observing mutual difference to a co-equal legislative body. Through House Resolution Number 1562, not only do we express our support to the leadership of the Speaker, but we likewise reaffirm our commitment to the principles of respectful dialogue and adherence to interparliamentary courtesy. We stand as one as House, one voice, rejecting divisiveness and dedicating ourselves to the pursuit of harmony and cooperation between our legislative houses. Both houses of Congress share the noble purpose of crafting a better future for our nation. It is with this shared responsibility that I call upon everyone to stand together as one and reaffirm our commitment to work for the betterment of the Filipino people. Now, it is the time for us to unite and address these challenges. I implore you to support the adoption of this resolution with a sense of urgency and in the spirit of unity. Let us defend the integrity of our institution. Give our full unwavering support to the speaker and ensure that we continue to serve the people with the honor and dedication they deserve. Mm. Let us move forward with dignity and unwavering commitment to uphold the democratic peoples that binds us. Sa inyo pong lahat, maya pagkat panapon, dakal pong salamat, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat, uh, Senior Deputy. Members of the House, and valued citizens of our nation. Today, as the leader of the National Unity Party, I address this August body to voice our steadfast support for the resolution that stands as a bulwark against the recent actions of the Senate against its co-equal legislative chamber in our country. This resolution symbolizes our unwavering commitment to uphold the sanctity and autonomy of the House of Representatives. The heart of this resolution lies in the core principles of our core democratic governance as enshrined in Article 17 of our Constitution. In its pursuit of national development in keeping with the vision of President Marcos Jr., this House, under the leadership of Speaker Martin Romualdez, has responsibly embarked on an initiative to rid our Constitution of its anachronistic economic provisions that have barred the inflows of foreign direct investments commensurate with our status as one of Asia's fastest-growing economies pre- and post-pandemic. The passage of resolution of both houses number six is a crucial step towards this endeavor, reflecting our collective resolve to steer our nation towards a more vibrant and prosperous future. As this happened, our country witnessed the initiative by people's organizations and civic groups endeavoring to gather public support for constitutional amendments. Regrettably, Mr. Speaker, though this commendable initiative from the grassroots has been clouded by severe allegations from certain senators casting aspersions on the integrity of this House 
and its, its team members who have surprisingly and unfortunately become the subject of a Senate inquiry. These public hearings, Mr. Speaker, contravene interparliamentary courtesy and reek of undue interference by members of one chamber in the official acts of legislators belonging to the other. In a bicameral setup such as what we have in the Philippine Congress, respect, civility, and decorum among members of both chambers forbid legislators belonging to one body to be investigating those of the other, and more so when there is actually nothing to investigate about such peers. There is no room for such a breach in the spirit of bicameralism as members of the Senate and the House are co-equals in our national legislature. Co-equals, Mr. Speaker. The NUP, while championing transparency and the ethos of accountability, believe that the approach adopted by senators exceeds the bounds of constructive scrutiny and ventures into the realm of undue disparagement. Such actions not only compromise the decorum expected between co-equal branches of government, but also impinge upon the honor and autonomy of this House. In these testing times, Mr. Speaker, Speaker Ferdinand Martin Romualdez has chosen wisely to remain above the fray, exemplifying astute leadership and navigating the turbulent political waters with grace and an unwavering commitment to uphold the principles of mutual respect and independence between the two legislative chambers of our Congress. United under the credo of one house, one voice, we stand in solidarity with our speaker, repudiating baseless allegations and safeguarding the dignity and sovereignty of this institution. With this resolution, the National Unity Party affirms and reaffirm its alliance with Speaker Martin Romaldes and the legislative agenda of the President in its vision for a peaceful and prosperous nation. We vehemently object to the Senate's contentious methods which undermine not only the cooperative ethos essential for effective governance, but also erode the trust of our citizenry in the Congress in particular and for our democratic processes in general. We advocate for a restoration of dignified discourse and a recommitment to the principles of interchamber respect and courtesy and the continuous pursuit of a close and harmonious working relationship between the Senate and the House for the greatest good of our people. The National Unity Party wholeheartedly endorses this resolution and we pledge to defend the independence and integrity of this House as we remain committed to the relentless quest for our nation's sustainable progress and prosperity. Maraming salamat po. Senators expressed both sorrow and bewilderment in response to a House of Representatives resolution affirming its honor and integrity amid what it termed an intense assault from the Senate. Senator Jingoy Estrada raised the issue on the Senate floor on Monday, questioning the use of the phrase intense assault from the Senate in the resolution. According to the House, this phrase violated the principle of interparliamentary courtesy and constituted undue interference in its legislative and constituent functions. Estrada countered by asserting that the Senate had not violated any rules or interparliamentary courtesy. He deemed the resolution an affront to the Senate as an institution, prompting Senate Minority Leader Aquilino Coco Pimentel III to express dismay over the House's actions. Pimentel questioned the House's intentions, stating that it accused the Senate of practices it purportedly engaged in itself, without clearly articulating its desires. Pimentel suggested the need for an open dialogue between the Senate and the House 
to address the issues. Senate President Juan Miguel Zubiri, presiding over the session, expressed uncertainty about resolving the impasse between the two chambers. He lamented the unfortunate turn of political debates, emphasizing that his statements focused on institutions rather than derogatory remarks about House members. The ongoing verbal tussle between the House and the Senate revolves around the proposal for charter change Chacha, through a people's initiative. Despite the conflict, Zubiri clarified that he had not made any derogatory comments about House members, emphasizing that his speeches centered on institutional matters. Intense assault coming from the Senate. I have been a defender of uh, this institution for more than a decade, and I love this institution. But what I cannot accept is that the, resolution, the title of the resolution is there, Intense Assault. May you please enlighten me with the definition of intense assault, Mr. President, because as far as I know, as far as I can remember, if my memory serves me right, there was no direct assault coming from the Senate and uh, towards the, any member of the House of Representatives. Uh, maybe the minority floor leader can uh, enlighten me with the definition of intense assault. And uh, just a minute. And we violated in violation of the principle of interparliamentary courtesy and undue interference in the performance of its legislative and constituent functions. What did we violate? I, did not, I don't think we violated any rule. I don't think we, we uh, violated the interparliamentary courtesy because we have always observed it from the very start, Mr. President. And I think this resolution is an affront to the Senate as an institution, Mr. President. Yes, uh, major, Minority Floor Leader. Just to uh, respond to the manifestation of our brave and honorable colleague, uh, Senator Estrada, who has always been, I've noticed that, yes, he always rises to support uh, this institution or a member of this institution, uh, Mr. President. Uh, meron din po kasi sa title ng kanilang resolution, the, I think the purpose of the res resolution of the House, which was passed, I think, today, Yes, today, no? today? Uh, I just, understand just it this today. afternoon. Is to express their support to the to their speaker. Yeah, okay. and that's that's uh, normal. Congratulations to the speaker. That's why that's why he is the speaker and he will remain to be the speaker. Pero bakit kasi mayroon pa po silang uh, allegations that uh, they are doing this. Uh, they, they they are reiterating the support for the speaker because they because it they are facing intense assault from the Senate, so from us. Tapos in violation of the principle of interparliamentary courtesy and undue interference in the performance of its legislative and constituent functions. So, uh, as I understand the title, dalawa pong accusation sa Senado is a uh, atatlo. Lagyan lang natin tatlo. There's an uh, intense assault coming from us and then we are violating interparliamentary courtesy and we are unduly interfering in their performance of legislative and constituent functions. Masarap po sana hindi na to patulan pero nasa title pa eh. So that means they really believe this uh, Mr. President. So I do not know what uh, what the house is uh, after and then meron pa po sila sa isang whereas clauses nila. Uh, I just failed to count kung anong what what number this is, no? Ito na lang po. Whereas on January 30, 2024, the Senate conducted an investigation without a clear <coughs> legislative purpose, specifically directed at discrediting the Honorable Speaker Ferdinand Marcos G. Romaldis and the House of Representatives. Ngayon, di ba... Di ba po, Mr. President, when ano ba yung term? When, when, when I when, when I allege that a member of this house has uh, personal or, or ulterior, ulterior motives, eh, 
bawal po yun, di ba? Yung, that's in, uh, uh, unparliamentary conduct. Ito naman baliktad. Sinasabi, sinasabi ante ng House of Representatives na yung investigation natin, although sina, in, sa title, in aid of legislation, wala daw tayong clear legislative purpose. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that is, that is the unparliamentary Uh, conduct, uh, Mr. President. And for the information of the House, in a few minutes, I will already be filing a bill to make complete, in my opinion, no, which makes complete RA 6735. So now it can be used now as uh, the legal basis for a people's initiative. Kasi yan na nga ruling ng, yan ay ruling ng Supreme Court Alam na natin yan, na-remind tayo ulit because of this incident and our hearings, na-reinforce na mga resource persons, na ganito nga yung ruling na Supreme Court, uh, ito yung kahinaan ng batas. So, ayan yung clear legislative purpose at ito na ang clear legislative result. A bill will be filed which hopefully will now be sufficient to make RA 6735 as a clear sufficient and adequate basis for the people to exercise the right to uh, uh, initiate amendments to our constitution. So, nakakalungkot uh, that the House, our co-equal uh, body here in the legislative branch, has accused us of practices which they are doing in the very same accusatory uh, uh, document, uh, Mr. President. So, la, so, ano ba talaga ang gusto nila? So, siguro, the leadership, siguro, of the two houses must uh, have a dialogue. So, maybe our majority leader can talk to the majority leader <laughs> of the house, uh, Mr. President, for an honest-to-goodness dialogue. <laughs> Ano ba talaga ang gusto nila? Kasi the document, pagbasahin mo, it betrays uh, something. They want, they want something which they, they seem not to be able to state uh, properly and directly, uh, Mr. President. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, I haven't attended any uh, hearing of uh, the... Uh, resolution filed regarding the People's Initiative chaired by uh, Senator I.B. Marcos. But I have been monitoring the events of uh, the hearings that has been held by the Committee on Electoral Reforms. But never did I see or hear anybody or any member of the Senate accusing or assaulting any member of the House, especially the uh, Speaker of the House. Wala naman hong binabanggit na pangalan ng kahit sinong representante ng Kamara dun sa House of Representatives. That's why I am picked because, uh, again, the Senate as an institution is again facing another uh, challenging uh, challenge here because of this uh, resolution that has been approved by the House of Representatives, Mr. President. So, Mr. President, uh, if I may just uh, uh, just a uh, yes, please proceed, Majority. Very short uh, manifestation, as I heard my uh, name from the minority leader, uh, Mr. President. During the uh, hearing uh, conducted by uh, the chairperson in charge here in the Senate, Senator uh, Amy Marcos, there are a lot of things that we were able to discover in aid of legislation, and that's why. My question is if there is a resolution calling for an inquiry in aid of legislation, is this considered unparliamentary, uh, Mr. President? Because in, in that particular hearing alone, Mr. President, we were able to, uh, to uh, air out a lot of concerns, uh, particularly, for example, uh, Mr. President, how the Commission on Election would actually address the uh, uh, receiving of signatures, Mr. President. Two days later, Mr. President, after the hearing, I asked for our provincial election officer in Bulacan. And she herself stated that, thank God for the meeting, because right now, uh, everything is uh, 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 
under the scrutiny now of uh, not just Congress but also of the Commission on Elections. Uh, for example, Mr. President, uh, there was a time for a, a long period of time that the, the uh, members of the Commission would say that it is just a ministerial duty for them to uh, receive uh, the signatures. And then all of a sudden, the NBank came up with a resolution saying, stop, stop receiving, me. suspend the, re the, 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 the receipt of all these signatures. And so, what is it, Mr. President? Is it really ministerial? Is it uh, 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 discretionary? And now, during the hearing, it, 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 it came about that Comelec has been issuing certification. The Annex B came out. And so I asked, Mr. President, why are we issuing certification? I thought it's just a ministerial duty. Now, you're certifying. Now, the word certification means... You are doing something. It's not just receiving, not just a ministerial duty. You are certifying. Now, the question, the million-dollar question is, how do you certify? How do you certify? And it appears there's no basis on how the commission would certify this, uh, this document, uh, Mr. President. Don't you think it's helpful, Mr. President? I think it's very helpful. Now, on the part of, of this representation as a member of this August chamber, it, 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 it bothers me. Mr. President, that uh, our co-equal uh, uh, House, uh, with the House of Representatives, would accuse the Senate of coming up with this so-called intense attacks, Mr. President. Intense attacks. I, I, I have, I've been a member of Congress for quite some time, nine years in the House of Representatives. I've never heard of any resolution like this, Mr. President. I am not going to file a resolution here in the Senate to congratulate our Senate President and tell him, Mr. President, we are all behind you. Or Senator Marcos, we are all behind you. I don't need to do that. Why? May isang salita ang mga Senador. May isang salita. Hindi natin kailangan yun, Mr. President. The fact that we see each other, yung pagkamay natin sa isa't isa, alam na natin. Meron na tayong pinagkaisahan. Meron tayong pinagkasunduan, Mr. President. I cannot say otherwise with, with, with the other chamber, Mr. President, because, and I think this is the, the root cause of the problem, I think the leader of the House is not sharing the information that was shared to us by our Senate President. Doon sa mga pag-uusap, doon sa mga napag-usapan, na dumating yung mga pagkakataon ilang beses na hindi sila tumupad sa pinag-usapan. At ngayon, binibigyan pa tayo ng deadline nung isa, kung sino man yun, kung anong gagawin ng Senado. Tayo ba'y utusan dito, Mr. President? Tayo ba ay basta susunod na lamang kahit kanino? Mismo Presidente ng Pilipinas, hindi ko narinig na sinabihan ang ating Senate President. I was there, Mr. President, during the meetings. Hindi ko kailanman narinig ang Pangulo ng Pilipinas at sabihin sa atin na ganito lang, dapat ganito yung timeline nyo, tapos na kayo, etc. And we are even talking about the soul of our nation. Mr. President, I, I, I take offense as uh, I uh, joined the gentleman from San Juan in uh, raising this uh, particular issue. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, so, Mr. Yes, President. Uh, Mr. President, itong panawagan ko po, Mr. President, na although this representation uh, will soon file my own a bill to improve uh, 6735 because I filed also a bill in the 17th Congress. So medyo familiar na po yung opisina ko sa topic and we're ready with our own version. But I think our committee must uh, continue and finish the work, uh, Mr. President, and file uh, file the committee report, ano talagang findings, and then if there is if there is also a bill coming from the committee, i-file na rin po natin yun. So it's without prejudice to my own to the to the bill which I am filing soon, uh, Mr. President. So, let's finish the the hearing in aid of legislation to its logical conclusion. That is my call to this uh, body and to the committee, Mr. President.